situation. Now let's see how today will evolve. Firstly, I would like to ask you all to mute yourselves if you haven't already done so. Feel free to send us your questions at any time through Slido by typing Life Networking CY right here. No sign up is required. If you like a question someone else has posted, then click on right on like right next to it because the popular questions will be answered first. So I urge you to open Slido now and type Life Networking CY and be ready to post your questions. I will now give the floor to Mrs. Elena Stilianopoulou, Head of Nature Protection Unit and Waste Management Unit at the Department of Environment in Cyprus, as well as Project Manager of the Cyclamen Project. Mrs. Stilianopoulou, can you hear us? Me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Ah, great. Okay, so um, good morning to all of you. Um, I would like to welcome everybody, the, the participants and the guest speakers to this, uh, to this uh, meeting. And uh, it is really great pleasure that you are here with us in this networking event organized by the Department of the Environment under the Life Cyclamen Project. Um, Life. Life is a successful platform of cooperation for member states and it's an amazing multiplier of sustainable solutions which incorporate the environment, society and economic development. This networking event is a great opportunity for knowledge and experience sharing between life beneficiaries and new potential life applicants. I, um, I truly hope that through this event new channels of communication and cooperation will be established among private and public bodies for new and successful life proposals. I would like to congratulate all of you who are currently running a life project and encourage all the new applicants to work together in making the most out of this life funding. Working together is the only way we can ensure the greatest benefits to our environment and our society. I hope this event proves to be fruitful for you I'm really glad that you're all participating and I wish you a, a very nice web meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Tiliano Bullo. And we're now ready to begin with our first guest speaker. Dr. Vasily Giglev Toyanni, Land Stewardship Officer at Green Fund, will present the Life Terrascape project. Dr. Giglev Toyanni, please turn on your camera and microphone. Let's see. I think you have control now. Dr. Kleftoyani, can you hear us? You can't hear us. Let's see if we can fix this. Um, we can you can you please try again turning on your uh, microphone? It doesn't matter if you can't turn on your camera. We have your presentation here, and we could um, we could show it. Just as long as you can use your microphone. Okay, until we figure out this problem, let's go to the next speaker. I would like to call Dr. Gula Gassa, Head of the Risk Prevention and Education Department and Honorary Professor at the National Food Chain Safety Office of Hungary. Dr. Gassa will be presenting the project Wasteless, Live Food Waste Prev. Dr. Gassa, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. I try to share my my screen. Uh, 
Let's see if technology is with us today. We can see your screen. Yes, okay. So let's I'm going to wait my a few slides. minutes. Uh, let's just wait a few minutes till we see your. Oh, yeah, you can see your presentation now. You can see it. All right. Great. So I try to put in, in full screen mode. All right. So thank you very much for the invitation. Um, uh, my task here is to talk about some innovative tools we have utilized in our project, which is called Wasteless. Uh, actually, this is a food waste prevention uh, program in Hungary, aiming di uh, directly to the households. And uh, I try to I try to go to the next uh, slide. It's not so easy. Okay. So uh, for the for all projects, you need an actor, and the actor here is the National Food Chain Safety Office, my workplace, which is a central level authority in Hungary for food chain control. And it controls the whole food chain from soy to the retailers, shops, and 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 uh, restaurants and also deals with risk communication and quite an active uh, actor in the media, especially in the national level media, of course, with uh, um, um, more than 100 press releases uh, annually and uh, uh, 10 times uh, um, more uh, press inquiries uh, annually. Um, so uh, this institution is quite well known and popular and uh, a credible organization amongst uh, Hungarian people. We need a problem uh, for a good project and unfortunately this prog problem is just on our table, namely the um, food waste. And uh, I'm pretty sure that you are all aware of the numbers which uh, indicate that the majority of food waste is being produced by the households in Europe. And uh, we need, of course, some kind of an answer. And in this regard, we received many, many, um, let's say, ans answers. And we realized that for every complex problem, there is an answer which is clear, simple, and usually wrong. So we received uh, lots of uh, simple, clear, and wrong answers uh, from different stakeholders uh, in the society and, and from the food chain, the media. Uh, for instance, why not to give the leftovers from event catering to the poor people? Why not to give expired uh, food to the poor? Why not to give all restaurant leftovers, including those which are left on the plates to animals as feed? Uh, why destroying all those foodstuffs which were confiscated by the authority instead of uh, charity? Of course, those who are familiar with food safety uh, principles are know the answer for these uh, questions, but these are um, majorly negative uh, answers. But uh, after years of answering these kind of questions one by one, we realized that actually we have positive answers too, uh, which were the basis of a public campaign about food waste prevention, in which we invited all interested partners, stakeholders. There is a timeline uh, for food waste prevention in Hungary, uh, started 15 uh, years uh, ago with the establishment of the Hungarian Food Bank Association, and uh, uh, our project concept uh, came 10 years after this first uh, step. And uh, um, this year, uh, the project Wasteless was declared to be the national level food waste prevention program of Hong Hungary uh, by the Food is Value Forum, which is the higher level of stakeholder forum in this uh, field. So it uh, took five years to get this uh, um, notification and it took uh, 15 uh, years uh, uh, since the realization of the pro uh, problem to have a national level program so 
uh, it is a historical uh, period. Uh, we have submitted the project idea to the uh, LIFE framework and for the second time uh, it was uh, evaluated positively and we received the co-funding from the EU Commission. The project uh, is, uh, uh, has got uh, four uh, branches. Uh, of course, it uh, relies heavily on a consumer campaign and we have created a school program, which is very important now. We have created good practices with stakeholders from the food chain and share them uh, with uh, not just with the Hungarian entrepreneurs, but uh, all of these materials have uh, English versions as well. So we would like to uh, share it with other countries. And uh, of course, we conducted extensive network within this project which is a must for uh, life uh, programs. And uh, getting to the innovative tools, uh, I would like to uh, um, give uh, some idea for you if you are interested in creating your own life uh, program. I would like to start with the uh, school program, which is uh, maybe the most important field of our project. Uh, it uh, really provides a long-term impact. Uh, but for that, we had to invest a um, lot of uh, energy in creation of the educational materials. So you can see some uh, pictures of uh, these materials, including the student, student book, workbook, teacher's book. Uh, we have created animated videos, PPTs for the teachers, which can be freely edited by them. Uh, all of these materials have the English versions as well. We have uh, um, provided demonstration lessons for almost 2,000 children and more than 100 teachers uh, in uh, 58 schools in Hungary. And uh, we wanted to go for more, but unfortunately the COVID situation is prevented the personal uh, demonstration uh, classes. That's why we have created an online demonstration lesson. And uh, we or organize uh, uh, different kind of contests uh, every year uh, to raise at the attention of students and uh, teachers about this uh, project. Just some uh, picture of the classes. Our general experience is that uh, uh, children are quite interested in having um, information about food waste and uh, they uh, seem to be quite surprised to learn about what uh, uh, amount of food waste is created in their homes. Some beautiful picture of this year's drawing contest and the winners received personal uh, gifts and of course uh, they have uh, they had the chance to win something for their school you can see it is a composting bin uh, which they were awarded uh, for the schools um, the next point is the timely communication we are looking for uh, the important days in uh, society uh, for instance, the Earth Day, the Food Losses and Waste Day, it, which was just held the first time uh, this year uh, and announced last year by FAO, the World Food Day and uh, other uh, important days and holidays, um, such as uh, the Christmas and uh, Easter, because uh, these are quite uh, good. Um, opportunities to build on the media vacuum. So if you provide important and timely information, the media uh, start uh, working with this uh, info and uh, without um, further investments, uh, you have a, a good impact in the media. Uh, anyway, we uh, are focusing very much on press relations and uh, um, this includes also the social media presence. Uh, 
Uh, here you can see some numbers. I would like to highlight uh, just the last one. We were able to reach uh, uh, 96 million people, which means that uh, almost every Hungarians could see our messages 10 times uh, already, which is, I think, a great uh, result. Here are some examples or, of our Wasteless Christmas uh, campaign. And uh, for COVID, we have also created a guide, uh, and it was also quite actively covered by media. Uh, we concentrated in on the food stockpiling, uh, which happened to the happened in the Hungarian households uh, uh, in the beginning of the year, in the middle of the first wave, and we wanted people to be prepared for the second wave. And of course, not just uh, talked about uh, stockpiling, but also about how to prevent food waste uh, deriving uh, possibly for, uh, from stockpiling. Networking is also a very important activity of the project. And uh, it turned out to be quite an effective communication tool as well, because uh, uh, we were able to create good practices for catering, food industry, trade, and uh, small communities. And uh, members of these uh, stakeholder groups uh, went uh, to the media, found their me uh, way to the media as well, and promoted these materials because they were proud that they contributed to these materials. So not just the good uh, practices were important, but uh, the communication impact of creating the good practices as well. Uh, we were quite active in international networking as well. Here you can see one of uh, the most important events of the project, which was uh, held uh, two years ago. And, uh, the opening speech uh, was given by the EU Commissioner for Environmental Protection, and the keynote speech was given by the Commissioner for uh, Health and Food Safety. It was quite a, a nice moment to have all of these uh, guests, uh, um, counting more than uh, 120 participants from 14 countries. And uh, I wanted to mention research, although research directly is not supported by uh, the uh, life framework projects. Uh, still, we needed some kind of research activity to monitor the project indicators. And we exploited this uh, not just for monitoring, but for communication as well we realized that this info uh, is original. And this original data was very well accepted by the journalists. Among the monitoring activities, we have planned and conducted two household food-based measurements based on the EU recommended fusions methodology. And we found that the average Hungarian citizen produces as much as uh, seven, uh, 68 kilo of food waste a uh, year uh, in uh, 2016, which was reduced by approximately 4% um, uh, within the next uh, uh, four years. It was quite a big uh, success for not just the project, but for uh, all of the uh, Hungarian stakeholders uh, interested in food waste reduction. Uh, we expected a bit more, but uh, during these years, the um, income and the relative income of Hungarian people uh, was raised by 16 percent. So, uh, and uh, um, this uh, factor influences the food waste production very much. So uh, even though 
uh, we could reduce food waste in the country. Uh, the uh, food waste uh, can be uh, categorized uh, to, four, to three sections and uh, the target in our project is the unavoidable food waste. So this is the uh, vestige uh, we should uh, avoid at all cost. This is uh, still edible food which uh, um, uh, went wrong for some reason, for instance. Uh, food safety reasons or uh, expired uh, in the household. Uh, we uh, have uh, formulated many uh, messages how to avoid uh, the creation of the production of food waste from the planning of the shopping, during the shopping, transportation of goods to home, uh, storage of foodstuffs, uh, producing your meal, um, serving your meal, and uh, handling the leftovers. All of these are very important steps in food waste prevention. And um, we not just measure the total food waste, but uh, we have measured the different types of food being wasted in the Hungarian households and found that the majority of uh, food waste uh, is uh, uh, represented by um, house uh, by uh, ready to eat uh, food uh, especially me uh, meals uh, we create uh, at our home the next uh, um, most frequent food waste category was the bakery products and the first one uh, is the category of uh, vegetables and fruits you can uh, see some uh, further details in these articles. Uh, to sum summarize the most important uh, and most innovative uh, tools of the uh, campaign, we um, conducted a very intensive communication, uh, which was quite proactive uh, in terms of finding the important events uh, to which we have connected the food waste uh, paradigm and we used original research data to raise the awareness of uh, journalists and journalists could uh, amplify uh, the messages uh, to the society and we have created a school program which can provide long-term impact for the project but through the children we were able to reach the parents as well and also i have to admit that uh, it has got a communication value as well because uh, every year when school starts journalists are open to have all kinds of uh, school related news and uh, uh, for that occasions we are timing uh, events as well and also I would like to raise your attention about the cooperation in the food chain. Your, the stakeholders of the food chain uh, um, can actively help uh, the promotion of your messages and ca can help you in many other ways. Thank you very much for the kind attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Gasser, for the insightful presentation. Now let's see if we have Dr. Kleftoyani with us. And yes, good morning. Good morning, Ms. Hatsdanil. Thank you. Good Thank morning. you for the invitation. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, good morning to everyone. I hope you are all keeping well during this difficult period and I hope we will get over it soon. Let's see if, we, if you can share your screen now. Yes. Perfect, you can go ahead. Thank you very much. If you can maximize the, the view of the presentation so we can see it better. Okay, moment. Okay, here. All right. Well, 
I'm going to present the Life Terrascape project entitled Employing Land Stewardship to Transform Terrace Landscapes into Green Infrastructures to Better Adapt to Climate Change. This presentation focuses on the land stewardship approach and the establishment of the first land stewardship organization in Greece under the auspices of the Green Fund. You can visit our website at lifeterrascape.agean.gr. The coordinator of the project is the University of the Aegean. Partners are the municipality of Andros, the Green Fund, the National and Capodistrian University of Athens, the Hellenic Agricultural Organization Dimitro, and the National Observatory of Athens. Dry stone terraces for centuries allowed the cultivation of marginal island areas with poor and particularly dry soils and supported local farming communities, as well as ecosystem services by improving the rainwater percolation, reducing the soil erosion and wildfire risk, and favoring local biodiversity. The aim of the LIFE project is the restoration and the recultivation of abandoned dry stone terraces to demonstrate the benefits in economic, cultural and ecological level and create green infrastructures resilient to climate change impacts by adopting the land stewardship approach. The project is being implemented in Andros Island since July 2017 and has been extended until October 2020. 2022, sorry. The objectives of the project are to demonstrate climate adaptation of island landscapes and highlight the significance of terraces as key green infrastructure elements. To introduce the land stewardship approach in Greece under an organized and effective manner. To produce climate smart added value products by establishing a smart local cluster of farmers food and tourism businesses, and to increase awareness of target groups and stimulate behavioral changes towards climate responsible attitudes. The expected results are the establishment of the first land stewardship organization in Greece, introducing this way the land stewardship approach to make contracts with the landowners and manage cultivation and restoration of terraces, and this is the subject of this presentation. Also, a strategic adaptation plan for the agricultural sector of small Aegean island ecosystems. The establishment of an agro-nutritional cooperation and a smart local cluster to promote certified climate smart local products. Propagation of local crop varieties to be cultivated at project terraces. Organization of the Andros Dry Stone Wall School with workshops and training seminars, a good practice guide and a decision support tool for climate smart agriculture, and an extensive awareness campaign. Let's now look at the meaning of the term land stewardship. Land stewardship is a strategy for nature and biodiversity conservation that involves landowners and users such as farmers, shepherds, etc., through voluntary agreements with land stewardship organizations. Land stewardship provides an effective means to engage local stakeholders in the direct implementation of core nature conservation policies, while it is a strategic tool to preserve the values of the landscape and the environment as a whole by prioritizing the functional restoration of agroecosystems the capacity to respond to environmental disturbance and the preservation of biodiversity. Land stewardship can be adapted based on traditional management tools to meet changing needs. Recognizing that land management requires not only social will but also relevant social skills, the land stewardship approach includes training for direct resource users and decision makers in the public and private sector. Land stewardship has international impact and application. In Europe, 
it can assist to create opportunities for nature conservation in individual member states and regions and contribute to biodiversity conservation across Europe by directly involving people. Many European organizations are active in the land stewardship network, such as the Catalonian XCN, which is a collaborator of the TerraScape project. There is available relevant literature on the internet, such as the European Manual and the Land Stewardship Toolkit. The Land Stewardship Strategy is based on the establishment of a land stewardship organization in which all interested farmers and landowners, as well as other professionals, participate and work together to restore the landscape. The landowner's participation procedure is simple and involves the signing of voluntary agreements so that their land can be made productive. In this way, land stewardship contributes not only towards environmental protection and landscape conservation, but also provides those who are involved with economic, social and cultural benefits. A land stewardship organization has three dimensions, an economic organizational, a social and an environmental one. Concerning the first, the LSO creates an organizational framework for effective operation, ensuring the effective management of the infrastructure and the equipment. Concerning the social dimension, the LSO creates and exploits local social capital, assimilates local knowledge and manages human resources during and after the end of the project. Concerning the environmental dimension, the LSO suggests interventions that are compatible and mitigate the impact of climate change using, wherever possible, local varieties for cultivation and preserving the diverse rural landscape of the island. Operation of the land stewardship organization includes two phases, the management transfer and the management support. Concerning the management transfer phase, the LSO signs agreements with landowners and reinvest the income derived from selling farm production for the LSO purpose. Concerning the management support phase, the LSO makes agreements with active farmers to set the management action for maintenance, committing to the terms, conditions and duration. It is important to highlight that after the end of the project, the LSO is expected to become a financially self-sustained organization. It will be supported by revenues derived from high-value local production, investing this income to further land to be entered to the system. Planning and establishment of the first LSO in Greece under the auspices of the Green Fund turned out to be a challenging action due to administrative and legal issues. The Green Fund is a public entity governed by public legal framework and is not allowed to be involved as a founder in an organization with commercial activity. Following a lengthy and demanding process and having explored the relevant legal framework in Greece, taking into account the enabling of Green Fund's contribution and after consulting the European Manual for Land Stewardship, incorporating XCN's experience and advice and examining possible alternatives the legal form of a social cooperative enterprise in Greek Kinsep was decided to be the most suitable and effective choice for establishing the LSO under the umbrella of a public entity. Concerning planning of the LSO establishment and in the frame of regular communication between the Green Fund and the Catalonian collaborator XCN to exchange know-how, knowledge and experience, the International Land Stewardship Workshop was held in Athens and Andros in April 2018. The workshop made the most of the opportunity to exchange views and explore possibilities to better achieve the goals of the project, especially related to the LSO. Field visits in Andros Island, as well as meetings with local authorities and stakeholders contributed to the attainment of the workshop aims. 
a field trip to Catalonia followed in September 2018, which gave us the opportunity to learn from the XCM experience, as well as from other examples of land stewardship application in the countryside of Catalonia. But what is a social cooperative enterprise? What is a Kinset? A Kinset promotes innovation and sustainable development activities, for example, protection and restoration of natural environment and sustainable farming. It pursues social purpose and collective benefits and follows collective and democratic decision-making process. In addition, a Kinset allows for assigning a contract with a public entity in order to fulfill a common purpose. This provision enables the Green Fund, as well as the Municipality of Andros, to sign a collaborative agreement with the Kinset in order to describe mutual commitments. The steering committee of the Kinset is a five-member committee. All members have right to vote. In addition, every single farmer or owner or businessman can become a friend of the Kinset enhancing in this way the participatory character of the organization. Friends can voluntarily help, strengthen and encourage the Kinsep activity. This is the LSO Kinsep Aegean Farmers Organogram. Under a collaboration agreement between the Green Fund, the Municipality of Andros and the Kinsep, the land stewardship organization Aegean Farmers were, was established. The LSO operates exactly as described in the project, and there is also a monitoring committee which is mandatory under the agreement and inspects the LSO actions. After the LSO establishment, signing of the agreements with landowners followed for granting their land to be cultivated and restored by the project. The private agreements describe objectives, commitments of the organization and the landowner, special conditions, expenses, duration, etc. The duration of the private agreements is six years. The procedure for preparing the agreements involves meetings with, meetings with the, the landowners, collection of the necessary documents, for example, contracts, site plans, tax declarations where needed, Legal processing dealing with any peculiarities such as incomplete or inaccurate supporting documents, and finally, the private agreements preparation. Building trust and strengthening the social network, as well as communicating a clear and inspiring vision for the landowners before signing the agreements, is crucial for the effective and successful operation of the LSO. In September 2020, the LSO Kinset XGM Farmers proceeded with the first transaction by selling the year's yield. Income will be reinvested for the LSO purpose and will be also used to support farmers during the second phase of the process. The Land Stewardship Web Platform is one of the most important tools to introduce land stewardship to nature conservation stakeholders and the public. It includes a help desk for technical, financial and legal information and advice, and a forum for a visitor to interact and cooperate with other stakeholders. The web platform offers the possibility to stakeholders to express interest about the live Terrascape project by completing a relative forum. In addition, visitors have the option to express interest in applying land stewardship to other areas of Greece through another form. You can visit the Land Stewardship web platform at landstewardship.gr to be further informed or subscribe to the platform. At this point, I would like to thank the Cyprus team for the invitation to participate and present the Live Terrascape project and for giving us the opportunity to virtually meet with each other. I would be really glad to book a meeting with anyone who is interested to be further informed about the land stewardship approach. Together, we can explore the possibilities and alternatives for more effective implementation of land stewardship. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kleftogiani, for the very interesting presentation. Remember, everyone, that you can start sending us your questions through Slido. Just type Life Networking CY. 
uh, and uh, post your question or like other people's questions to give them priority in answering. Uh, now let's move on to our next speaker. Dr. Gostandinia Tsangari, Director and Researcher at the Institute of Mediterranean Forest Ecosystems, Elgo de Mitra, will present the Life Green Project. Dr. Tsangari, can you hear us? No, we can see you. So maybe you just need some time to turn on your microphone. and share your screen. Okay, do you hear me? Yes, perfect. I'm Chagari. Uh, I think there's a, a bit of delay. Can you, uh, can you please try talking again? Dr. Tsangari, yes, we can't I, hear you. I, I can, can you hear me? I am Tsangari from Athens. Perfect. Uh, is it possible to share your screen? You cannot hear me. We can hear you, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can, uh, um, if you can share your so screen. So, um, so our project has just a second, Dr. Tsangari, we can't see your presentation. But... The promotion of food uh, urban integration of green infrastructure to improve climate climate governance in city. I will uh, be sharing my screen, Dr. Tsangari, because we can't see your screen. Just a second, and I, I will show your presentation Sorry. while you're talking. No problem. Okay. I have sent to... Yes, we can see your presentation now. You can begin. Can you... Just, just let me know when you want me to change the slide. Okay. Okay, okay, thank you. So, uh, our project concerns the promoting urban integration of green infrastructure to improve climate governance in the city. The short name of our project is Life Green. The budget, the budget of the project is about 1,800,000 and uh, the Scientific coordinator, a coordinator of the project is our institute, the Institute, the Institute of Mediterranean and Forest Ecosystem, and there is a other five partners: the Minister of Environment and Energy, the company Homeotech, the Central Union of uh, Central Union of Hellenic Municipality, Municipality of Amarusion. Uh, in a uh, region of Attiki and municipality of Iraklion in Crete, in region of Crete. So, next, please. Sorry, there's next, a slight the delay. Next, uh, can you continue? Yes, I'm trying. there's a slight delay with our connection, I think. Oh, is this the right slide? <laughs> okay. Yes, the Light Green Project initial assessment in of urban green in areas started in two pilot municipalities. So in the map you can see 
think where is this? The only in the hierarchy of Crete, Crete, and the other in Athens. So, uh, the, the project starts uh, at uh, 2018 and has a duration about uh, three years and a half. The next, please. Can you continue? Yeah, it, it just takes a, a while to change slides, but I think I did it now. That is a problem. The Life Green Project will utilize all available tools and indicators indicators at European level to assist in strategy planning and management of Okay, I, I can uh, I can continue. Can I continue? Yes, yes. The life grid projects will utilize, utilize the all available tools and indicators at European level to assist in strategy planning and management in urban green areas in the context of climate change adaptation and mitigation. So, aim and, and green conservation law governance in cities through the establishment of an integrated policy framework focus in urban green, green areas. The next, please. Objective and scopes. City already faced harsh climate due to obvious anthropogenic impacts responsible for the alteration of both natural surface and atmospheric conditions. Also, uh, urban green area element, and urban landscape, and climate change mitigation, but remain underutilized. Light green propose a sustainable urban forest management framework combining participatory planning with climate change and mitigation oriented planning. Next. Also, let's the initial assessment and uh, urban green areas target at pilot municipalities in, the, in two areas, as you see in the previous figure. By performing several steps, the team measured for uh, urban green areas. At first, the biodiversity of indicators of uh, urban green areas uh, by Dr. Solomu, biometeorological indicators in these areas by Dr. Pruchos, insect vari va variation uh, in these places as an indicator, by Dr. Aziz, and, and that last phenotypic and biometric estimation uh, by Dr. Uh, Avramid. The next is Expected impacts is the 
to assessment that of the current climate-related risk and threats in two municipalities and the evaluation of the exciting existing green infrastructure, capacity building and municipality level. Also, to estimation, the estimation of the current carbon dioxide sequestration by urban in two partner cities, establishment of guidelines and indicators to incorporate climate in the management of urban green areas and monitor their performance. At least establishment of cooperative or co cooperation platform, quantify data on, ge um, on geographic information, its contribution to climate change adaptation and mitigation, best practices and guidelines for replication. The next, please. Policy implication is, uh, you know, that, that we have lack of climate governance and stakeholders participation mechanism in planning, man, uh, man, 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 managing green infrastructure. So, uh, relate regulator act to incorporate climate change into the management framework of urban green areas in Greece. Also, best practice awareness, awareness raising activities addressing adaptation needs, climate policy monitoring, assessment and ex post evaluation, and also develop and implementation of natural 2030 climate and energy strategies uh, or mid-century strategies in Paris Agreement, according to the Paris Agreement. The next, please. So, uh, we plan a networking with other uh, initiatives that share the same at goals in Greece and other European countries. Communication of the object, objectives, results, and output of the project to the Council of the European Municipalities and Region and to the Government of Major and the other uh, green municipalities and districts, according to the Action uh, 5. And uh, initiative. A platform developed uh, uh, according to the action do to will be available in, uh, to all Greek municipalities through the Minister of Environment and Energy. Um, uh, also, at the end of the project, we shall have a holistic approach for every municipality in order to ensure and quantify a strong to obtain the mitigation due to the climate change. Thank you. Sorry for the and the presentation because we have problem and so with uh, with the communication. Thank you very much, Dr. Tsangari. We did have uh, internet connection problems, but I think all the information was conveyed uh, uh, just fine. Um, I remind you all once again that you can send us your questions on Slido and we will attempt to answer them at the end. Now let's move on to our last presentation for today. Mr. Haris Angelakopoulos, Technical and Environmental Manager at Appliances Recycling SA will present the Life Rewe project. Mr. Angelakopoulos, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everyone. Can you hear me? Just fine. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I have already shared my screen. Please, could you please confirm that it is okay? It's perfect. You can go ahead. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, thank you for your kind uh, introduction and, of course, all the attendees uh, 
as far as I can see, there are a lot of participants from different countries and uh, uh, different uh, sectors. Uh, let's say with uh, a common sector, the life tool. Um, of course, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Karis Akilakopoulos. I'm the technical and environmental manager of Appliances Recycling and Say. Is a producer responsibility organization scheme under the extended producer uh, responsibility principle for the we management uh, uh, accredited by the Hellenic Recycling Agency since 2004 uh, um, for the we management and for the categories of we increase. Um, on behalf of our we project, I, I would like also to thank you for the chance to to give you some idea and to share experience uh, for our uh, project, which is in the end, uh, uh, in, in the end of the uh, November of the year, uh, I will try to um, to give you an uh, overview and general picture of our uh, of the of the waste management uh, field and more specifically for the uh, we field. Uh, you know that we live in era industry 4.0 and uh, uh, with the connectivity of Internet of Things um, and uh, in the pipeline, the five generation cellular uh, networks. Uh, and uh, of course, unfortunately, the last year uh, under the uh, pandemic uh, uh, impact. All these factors have a great significance, let's say, influence in the e sector. Uh, on terms of uh, waste generated, uh, especially a lot of studies uh, such as the Global Waste Monitor uh, 2020 uh, that you can see um, uh, the figures. A lot of studies have been um, confirmed about the waste, uh, the waste generated, the volume of waste totally generated globally. Uh, we have to fit uh, uh, to confront a giant of waste. Uh, this is the general picture of the European uh, policy makers have already implemented and developed strict strategies under the umbrella, let's say, of circular economy action plan with the circular economy strategy to be uh, performed and implemented uh, by uh, 2019. Uh, the first package was uh, from uh, since uh, 2016. Uh, with uh, a, 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 if we can split this uh, strategy in three axes, we we may mention uh, the designing and manufacturing of uh, production of electrical uh, devices, the priorities that, uh, that must be given to the we management uh, acts, uh, talking about prevention of we production and preparation for use activities, and of course the maximization of uh, uh, of the of the uh, secondary materials uh, produced by uh, we treatment, um, the environmental sound uh, treatment of these uh, materials. Uh, at the first ask, uh, uh, let's say that um, already European policy makers have uh, uh, developed a strategy and precautionary me me measures, such as new regulation for the uh, environmental friendly devices. We are talking about circularity and we are talking at the first axe, uh, not only for uh, energy consumption, but also for the repairability, re reusability, the potential that the heavy devices uh, during the manufacturing uh, um, stage. And a lot of references to different uh, and uh, special. Uh, let's say, um, devices such as uh, mobile phones and uh, other uh, similar device, devices with the right to repair with a lot of uh, measures. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the, the third uh, stage of the European uh, the circular economy in Greece is implemented all these years with the activities of our company. Uh, you can see uh, that uh, we have uh, different stages uh, all over the um, we treatment chain, the collection, the transportation, reception, storage, uh, and especially for the we treatment, 
to perform their pollution, mechanical treatment, and the final disposal and the final treatment of hazardous storage. Uh, in terms of circularity, more than 70% uh, of the uh, total productive uh, fractions by the way treatments are already delivered to the uh, Greek market. Uh, coming back to uh, the most, uh, let's say, crucial um, acts of the circular uh, strategy, of the circular economy strategy in the field of UE management, uh, the prevention of UE produ production, which is the first in the hierarchy, uh, and the preparation uh, for use uh, are the main, uh, let's say, uh, measures that we have to the main sectors that we have to take measures and uh, REWI project with ACRA and REWI uh, uh, contributes with uh, uh, very special activities and actions and of course deliverables uh, not, on, not only in Greece, uh, especially in Greece, uh, with preparation for use activities, uh, preparation, prevention of UE production activities and also for developing infrastructure in the field of preparation for user activities. Uh, the main information of the project, you can see that our project, uh, the title is development, was development and the demonstration of paradigms uh, of, uh, to the sector of um, uh, prevention of the production of uh, we and uh, preparation for use. A total budget of the project was uh, uh, 2 million 200 thousand uh, euros. Uh, with the coordinating beneficiary being uh, uh, my, our company, uh, Appliances Recycling, say, as I described before, uh, uh, PRO scheme. And of course, with uh, very crucial roles by the uh, stakeholders, provided by the stakeholders and the key actors in, uh, in Greece, in our country, Hellenic Recycling Agency, Ecological uh, Recycling Society, Green Fund, which is the um, Let's say the branch of the the branch of the Ministry of Environment for funding activities in environmental uh, strategies, Harokopi University, and the association, the European Association Reuse for companies uh, that have uh, in their scope uh, uh, the, the main activity of uh, reuse, even for products or waste. Uh, targets or let's say deliverables uh, of this project. Uh, to the sector of prevention and the reduction of weed production, the development of a, a very e useful and flexible uh, uh, platform for the donation and the exchange uh, of uh, waste or devices, um, which is, uh, you can visit this uh, uh, site uh, to, to, to enter the, this platform, the organization of Seven Repair Cafe, which is more or less common to to other activities in uh, in Europe, uh, but uh, very successful, and of course the very uh, the, the very useful guidelines for repair and the good practices for prevention of weed production, which are uh, accessible to the consumers uh, of um, and the citizens. Uh, there are uh, let's say quick guide. Uh, for repair of small uh, electric devices uh, developed by uh, um, technicians. Uh, and of course, uh, the priority uh, that I will refer to the other uh, slides uh, after uh, this slide, uh, the priority in reuse and ensuring uh, good practices of we management with the development of the two sorting centers under the uh, umbrella and the technical requirements that have been developed as a deliverable of this uh, project uh, in order uh, as a vision to become a legislative provision to the uh, national legislative uh, framework and of course a common tool in order to measure with a common method the terms of uh, reuse preparation for reuse uh, uh, and the vision to, to be implemented by other European member states. Uh, as I said before, I'll try to share some experience uh, for uh, countries that have the same uh, features or particularities in the UE management field. And for that, uh, I think that it's useful for other 
participants or attendees to, to hear some of these experience, these findings and the results, especially the difficulties that we have, the constraints that we have fit um, all these years uh, during the implementation, the first stage, the implementation of these two sorting centers uh, in two years. We had a target to design, but not only that, to adapt the operation of these infrastructures in the context, let's say, the, the general context of the policy of uh, we treatment in Greece in a very uh, feasible manner and to ensure for that, uh, for sure, the this, this sustainability of this infrastructure and this establishment for the afterlife, excuse me, for the afterlife period uh, to optimize and make improvements uh, during all this uh, uh, period and uh, as a vision to, to these facilities to become a basis to rely on uh, other facilities, uh, on the implementation of other facilities in other parts in uh, Greece or in countries that have the same particularities. Uh, com coming back to the general uh, uh, picture, uh, I want to recall to remind you that uh, we have common uh, uh, directives from the European policymakers. Uh, I make reference to the directive. Uh, 19 of uh, 2012, uh, which sets obligation and strict rules and ambitious targets. You, you can uh, uh, consider that we have a lot of discussion among the stakeholders within sta stakeholders uh, uh, about the 65%, which represents the total amount uh, we collected in a yearly basis uh, related to the um, average uh, place to the market amount. Uh, for the three preceding years, it's a very ambitious target for all the countries of uh, um, of Europe that implement the extended producer responsibility principle, uh, and we have a different approach of this implementation. I can recall Italy, which is uh, the the PRO schemes uh, operate uh, under the umbrella of a common association called clear and house or in the uk we have more than 30 pro schemes in germany we have local authorities to share the we amounts collected in their facilities according to the market share of the producers uh, our case uh, which is similar to france and uh, belgium two of the countries which is similar uh, in which uh, one or two pro schemes for we treatment operate uh, and are responsible for the weed treatment uh, in all the country. Uh, but the main difference that I have to refer to is uh, the difference uh, of the infrastructure, the, the, the lack of infrastructure in Greece. You can see uh, countries with, the, with a lot of similarities for, in terms of population or other, um, let's say, attitude. In uh, Ireland, in Slovenia, case uh, or UK or uh, Germany, Belgium, uh, sorry, France, Belgium. Uh, as uh, as an example, you can see that a, a lot of um, the, the main portion of the we collected amounts is a recycling park or, with other terms, municipalities, waste household centers that already exist all these years, and this is the main difference. Uh, this was the main difference for the previous years for Greece uh, that we didn't have from the municipality and the local authorities infrastructure to provide accessibility for citizens in order to um, to get there. We, and of course, there is no let's say culture or attitude by uh, Greek uh, citizens. Uh, so, how do we collect? Uh, we all these years, uh, more than uh, 10,000 uh, we collection points have been developed by Appliances Recycling in SA uh, with cooperation with private companies, uh, which are dealing with scrap metal collections or other retailers, uh, stores uh, selling uh, e equipment. Uh, you can see that uh, the contribution of this type of uh, Let's say infrastructure uh, by local authorities is near to zero. To be fair, is uh, near to two percent of the total collection of we. Uh, and particularly, of course, is the same the country 
I mean, the kind of country geomorphology uh, with uh, you have traveled uh, in Greece more than uh, 200 inhabited islands in the location of the population in Greece divided in two parts, the north and the, uh, the other part, uh, the south part, uh, which is of course uh, coherent to the allocation, the, the, the allocation of the way it generated is coherent to the allocation of the population. Uh, to wrap up with the particularities, um, all the stages of way management are the umbrella of EPR schemes. Uh, way sources are exclusively the existing collection points by our company Appliances Recycling SA. And uh, of course, uh, the, these particularities, particularities was, were the reason why um, we have uh, uh, faced a lot of constraints. Uh, in bullets, difficulties in, the, uh, difficulties in the allocation of the infrastructure, um, unclear provision in the legislation uh, uh, framework of uh, the development of uh, this type of uh, infrastructure. Uh, I, I would stay to the final one, impossibility of sorting centers to be, to be developed in urban area and to be accessible to citizens. Um, after a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, optim optimization of operation and manager management plans, we finalized uh, two different uh, models of uh, uh, these establishments. Uh, uh, the, the first one uh, that had been uh, uh, developed in the region of Attiki with the um, contribution of the treatment facility and preparation for use uh, operator uh, called the Corset, uh, synergy with the treatment facility located at the same site. And uh, the other one with the contribution of the municipality in the north part of Greece, uh, of municipality of Oreokastro, after tender process uh, by provided by Green Fund, uh, and the contribution, uh, the services provided by the contractor uh, Hermes. Uh, two different models with uh, similarities and, of course, uh, differences. Um, the main uh, difference is that in the uh, north part of Greece, it was crucial uh, the contribution of the municipality of Oreocastro to the constructive activities. Also, the, the fact that the municipality had provided by funding, by green fund, uh, equipment and consumables. Uh, of course, uh, there is a similarity, crucial similarity for the sustainability of this uh, two, uh, let's say, um, uh, infrastructure uh, by uh, paying subsidies by e-cycle for the operation for uh, the operation of preparing for use activities to the two contractors. And for the first year, the crucial one, the funding uh, in the rate up to 60% of the eligible cost by the life tool. Uh, maybe uh, this is a very complicated to derive uh, flowchart, but uh, I can explain, I'll try to explain it. A uh, mixed we from collection points delivered to sorting centers to these two infrastructure uh, and uh, segregated to the, as a first step, to the um, six categories. Um, uh, by uh, set by the by the national legislation, and uh, after that, preparation for use activities, initial inspection, functional tests, uh, data raising for some specific uh, IT equipment, uh, cleaning, and others, in order to to, to finalize uh, these equipment and uh, for all the devices that have already passed successfully these stages to be sold in e store or uh, in physical stores. Uh, I would divide you to what's in order to prove my uh, my sense uh, this video which is uh, I don't know if you can, can see could you please confirm that you can hear this video? We can't hear it yet. Might need a few minutes. Uh, 
Yeah, we can see, but we can't hear. You can see only the video without uh, voiceover. Yeah. Uh, could you please? Uh, I have already. I think I have done it. Sailed to the. Sent to the chat room. The YouTube. Uh, Could you please share your screen and uh, play this video? Yes, yes, I will share my screen. Thank you very much. My God, just a second. Okay, I found the video. But we can hear the voiceover. Still working. Donate or exchange them on the Rewe platform. Second, in case they have to be repaired, get them to a repair cafe where minor damage is repaired for free, or take them to an expertized shop for service in case of extended damage. Third, discard them in the special recycling bins from where they are selected to be either reused or recycled. Would you like to know what happens to your devices afterwards? Let's see. Firstly, they are transported to the sorting centers for waste of electrical and electronic equipment located in Attica and Central Macedonia, both developed by the Life Review Project. There, the devices are checked, weighed, reported, and sort it out. The ones which can be reused are checked and repaired so as to be safely reused following the life reuse standards and technical requirements. The devices are then available to the public or ready to be donated to families or social institutions. Those devices that cannot be repaired are processed or transported to other treatment facilities in specialized collection beams for further treatment to become secondary materials that can be used later to manufacture new products. Don't let your devices dust on a shelf. You've got many options, even when you want to discard them. First, think of prolonging their life. Don't forget, by reusing those devices, you help both the environment and society. You help to save energy and natural resources, create new green jobs, and reduce electrical and electronic waste. What are you waiting for? Don't linger. Give your devices a second chance to have a new life. This project is 60% co-funded by the Europe Life program. Hey, thank you very much. And uh, I, I apologize for the technical problems, but uh, I think that uh, if you can hear me, that you have seen uh, some of the main, uh, let's, let's say, pictures and the main activities in the sorting centers. If you can uh, uh, switch to, the, I'm referring to the moderator, to switch uh, again me to presenter in order to continue my uh, presentation. Just a second. Yeah. OK. 
Can you present now? Perfect, thank you. I will not repeat all of the presentation, of course. Okay, give me one second, please. Uh, okay, I, I, I can see that I have only three or four minutes for the next slides. I'll try to speed up. Uh, and uh, this, uh, videos, uh, this video is um, one of the three, three series videos that have been delivered by uh, developed by the project uh, team. Uh, you you can uh, uh, see the other videos and watch the other videos in our site. Uh, some, uh, uh, let's say, results um, to present them more in a more accumulated way. You can see that more than 3,000 tons uh, of um, we uh, were pre imposed to preparation for use activities were visually inspected uh, and uh, uh, after that uh, more than 11 percent of them have already passed all the stages and uh, are ready to be sold uh, to the Greek or the uh, international market and uh, of course uh, as you may expect it uh, uh, to highlight the, the high um, let's say the usability of IT equipment, more than uh, uh, about 20% uh, of the, in terms of items, items we are sold. Uh, and, uh, um, due to the, let's say, very good networking and very good performance, of the reuse uh, activities by one of all the treatment operators, the two contractors, Hermes, uh, we, we managed to, to see a high reusability of uh, special equipment, equipment such as uh, POS machines for the financial transactions so via credit cards and the automated teller machines. Uh, as you can see, a great success to the reuse of this devices uh, and uh, during COVID situation more than 140 devices have been donated by the two contractors uh, to different types of uh, let's say um, organizations such as uh, hospital, NGO, uh, municipalities, schools uh, and uh, this donated equipment is about the five percent of the total species of the equipment sold until today. A lot of lessons uh, or results for from the technical side i have made a reference to, to, to that technical side and to that results uh, of course we from retailers and other companies which give their their goods uh, their property goods have a high potential of reuse it equipment and special equipment uh, have a high po potential for use uh, there is always space for improvement and uh, optimization with, let's say, uh, more efficient collection network, targeted loads with high potential for use, uh, more dedicated work in sorting at uh, source, installation of uh, special collection bins, and optimization of all the procedures. Uh, of course, it would be very uh, useful to be more flexible in the international sales and market according uh, according to the market uh, demand and to see that one of the model uh, as a result of the one of the model is that is very crucial the synergy with treatment we treatment facilities uh, some of the conclusion in the proposal to policy makers uh, it would be very crucial uh, or a basis uh, to, to the guidelines to become available to, to all the European say, uh, citizens. Uh, of course, um, uh, it, will, it would be very crucial uh, with uh, legislative uh, provisions to make more flexible to European members to adjust the technical specification. And uh, some general uh, proposals to, to promote uh, this type of uh, uh, equipment uh, uh, via financial initiatives for companies uh, selling uh, uh, this type of equipment with low VAT, not only at the products, uh, but also uh, VAT, uh, labor VAT, and other initiatives. But 
Thank you very much for your attention. Our vision is not to only to, to conclude and uh, to end up these uh, activities of the project, but at, after the life, uh, the, the afterlife period, to become a base for countries, especially countries of the European Union that uh, have uh, the same particularities in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Angelagopoulos, for the valuable experience you shared with us. Now it's time to go through the questions we have received. Let's just see. I would like to ask my team to share the questions with us. Okay, so the first question is, uh, sometimes we have landowners. Okay, so my team is instructing me to, yeah, okay, so we're starting with this question. Sometimes we have landowners that have died or are unknown or cases where several people own just a small piece of land. How did you deal with this issue? This is addressed to Dr. Kleftoyanni. Can you please turn on your microphone and your yes, camera sir. if you wish? Okay. Well, uh, camera is disabled by organizer. I don't know why. That's okay. Only uh, the sound. Well, uh, every case is different. Uh, we try to uh, select uh, those uh, fields and uh, those landowners uh, where the conditions are the best uh, to proceed uh, with the procedure. Uh, if uh, a landowner dies, okay, we uh, uh, communicate with uh, uh, the children or someone else and uh, continue with uh, uh, another way. I think this is a detail. And I think the, the next question is for me. How did you yeah. manage to find the owners? Well, the municipality of Andros has helped to this issue. Uh, and uh, many, we have uh, those um, uh, cases where the landowners find us. And this is really encouraging. And uh, this uh, shows that there is uh, this uh, participatory approach in all this uh, uh, effort of the project. Thank you very much. Let's go to the next, the next question, which is addressed to Dr. Casa. Are the guides for waste reduction or cooking guides for leftovers available in English? Dr. Gassa, are you with us? Yes, uh, here I am. Yes, they can be found. Uh, they are available on the web page of the project, or you can send me an email. I put both uh, contact information onto, onto the chat uh, window. Perfect. Uh, we have another question for you. Uh, what made you resubmit your project? Were there any other steps taken on your behalf uh, for the first and second submission? Yes, we had to develop it significantly before the second submission. We received a very precise evaluation after the first uh, round, which pointed out that uh, our uh, proposal lagged uh, the networking, especially to other EU life projects. And also, we didn't answer the questions properly, which uh, asked about uh, how. So we did uh, tell in the proposal that what are we are going to do, but we, di we didn't tell uh, in detail how we, are, we were going to achieve these uh, results. So uh, we learned that you have to put emphasis on the hows in a project proposal. And okay. also, if I may, uh, I saw another uh, uh, question, um, partly 
probably um, aimed at us. Uh, the next one, the DAW project used a third-party consultancy firm to manage all needed application documents. And in our case, we didn't use uh, this uh, service from uh, a third-party consultancy firm. We did uh, all the writing of the proposals, proposal by ourselves. So maybe if we used a, a service like that, uh, we could win at the, at the first time. But at least we learned the, by the mistakes uh, how to develop a project proposal. Very nice. I think this question is addressed to all guest speakers. If uh, any of the others want to share their uh, their view, their situation. No? Okay, uh, let's move on to the next question. It is very difficult to compete with the status quo where we get bombarded constantly by ads of new products. Have you tried to cooperate with the government? That's for Mr. Angela Kopoulos. Yes, uh, thank you for, for the very dedicated question. Um, I can see that the status quo, uh, this is the one fact. Uh, we have a lot of uh, new equipment uh, uh, to, the, to, the, to the market, uh, but uh, there is another fact that there is a, a turn by the European policymakers as I have presented in the first uh, uh, part of my uh, presentation, uh, to the circularity of uh, economy uh, with uh, uh, strict uh, measures uh, in order to promote this type of uh, uh, let's say treatment of uh, waste of electrical and electronic equipment. Uh, yes, there is a field uh, in order to promote with these measures not only to the um, to the stage of uh, uh, manufacturing the electrical and electronic equipment, but also to, this, to the other states to prevent we and uh, especially in Greece, as I explained, we have already um, uh, a, a great uh, network with the Hellenic Recycling, uh, Recycling Agency and uh, the Ministry of Environment in order to take some of these uh, measures to, to and financial initiatives in order to promote uh, the, uh, let's say, the, the share of uh, uh, this equipment. Uh, Mr. Angelakopoulos, there's another question for you, if you'd like to answer it. How do you secure the sustainability of the units that repair broken equipment? Uh, if I can understand, the question we are talking about the sustainability of the two infrastructure, that uh, the two, let's say, short-term centers. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, um, I have explained during my presentation that there is the first stage, the first stage, the first, let's say, pilot, the first year uh, of uh, these two uh, short-term centers, of the operation of the two short-term centers. Um, um, appliances recycling say set by as set by the national legislation uh, has the obligation to to provide and to to operate to cooperate with such type of way treatment facilities and to pay subsidies in order to be, to uh, to become sustainable this type of uh, of uh, operation. Uh, in the afterlife period, we have a strict contract with uh, the two treatment operators in order to uh, to make uh, these operations sustainable, uh, with paying, as I said before, subsidies uh, for all the operation of uh, reuse activities, uh, and to provide all to deliver to ship to to these facilities um, uh, the 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 we total amount collected a portion of the we collected in uh, Greece. Uh, of course, we had the um, let's, let's say we had uh, uh, the experience of one uh, year and uh, by uh, by providing uh, some uh, uh, fund uh, up to sixty percent of the electrical costs by the life uh, tool. Uh, but in the afterlife period. Uh, in order 
who will try to optimize, as I said before, uh, all of these activities, in which activities uh, to optimize the, uh, the sustainability of this uh, project. Thank you very much. We have another question for Dr. Gleftoyanni. Taken into account through your case study in the island of Andros, uh, will you extend this testing and successful scheme to other islands? Well, uh, yes, uh, we uh, communicate with uh, stakeholders in uh, other areas. Uh, we try to disseminate uh, the meaning, of the, the, the land stewardship approach, also through the web platform. As I said before, we have a forum where anyone can express interest for uh, other areas. And we hope that uh, we will be able to apply the land stewardship uh, uh, approach in other areas, in other islands as well. Thank you very much. And our last question is addressed to all guest speakers. Does your project have or did it have any policy uptake? Who would, la who would like to answer this question? Dr. Gliftoyani, would you like to give us an answer for this one? Well, um, the policy of uh, the land stewardship itself, is, um, it has to do with the uh, participation, with the uh, stakeholders' participation, and um, uh, this, has, this, is, this is very interesting in uh, applying uh, this approach. I don't know, I don't understand exactly what uh, policy, what is the, the question about? Uh, it's more general. Uh, it, it might not um, yes. apply to your project directly, but I guess all projects um, might have some influence in policy uptake. I might start with uh, some. Yes, if go I ahead. can. Um, no, every European country should uh, conduct a national level food waste prevention program uh, according to EU uh, regulation. And uh, since we have started ours uh, five years ago and provided some results, uh, the uh, Hungarian government and also the uh, most influential stakeholder forum. Uh, selected ours as the national level uh, program. And also, um, all countries have to report uh, food waste uh, statistical data to the EU Commission from now on. And uh, um, the measurement we conducted as, as uh, um, the monitoring of the indicators uh, is now the part of uh, the country report in terms of the household food waste. So from this uh, aspect, actually, I, I think uh, um, some of the results made it to the policy uptake uh, sphere. Thank you very much. Um, Can I continue with the regular yes. side? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Uh, as I explained uh, during my presentation, I think that the most crucial period of a life project is the afterlife period. Uh, and uh, how, how do you provide this impact and this adaption to the, uh, to the real uh, work and uh, the after years? Um, on terms of national uh, policy makers in uh, Greece, uh, we are very happy to say that uh, we are in constant uh, discussions uh, and uh, we have the, um, the support of the national policy makers uh, of the Ministry of Environment and the LN uh, Recycling Agency in order to some of the deliverables of the projects of the project to become, let's say, the basis to rely on for the next work. Uh, more specifically, the technical uh, requirements delivered by by the project um, will be in uh, will be implemented uh, uh, after some uh, optimization uh, some amendments to the national 
we hope that will be implemented to the national framework legislation framework and uh, uh, and we hope that other deliverables such as this development of the two infrastructure uh, will be a guide to uh, European, uh, let's say, countries with the same uh, particularities. Of course, available, we have available to all European citizens, and maybe the policymakers uh, can concentrate on that. Uh, all the uh, uh, easily accessible uh, uh, guides for repairing uh, our devices. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have uh, another question just before we close. Um, oh, two questions. We will have to hurry here. So uh, the one is for Mr. Angelakopoulos. Uh, no, sorry, for the repair of stone terraces. That's for um, Dr. Gliftoyani. Did you run a competition among applicants? What criteria were valued? Any administrative issues documenting? Well, uh, that has to do with the municipality of Andros, uh, who is in charge. Uh, this is a delay, a, a detail. I think that uh, I can see interest for um, specific uh, tasks. And I think that uh, we should book a meeting and uh, discuss uh, in detail. This question is uh, has to do with the municipality of Andros and uh, has to do with the procedure that uh, are they follow. Uh, the second uh, question, did you evaluate biodiversity in the stone terraces? This is uh, exactly uh, the same, um, has to do with the uh, uh, restoration of the terraces and the municipality. Uh, I think that uh, there should be um, face to face, a virtual uh, meeting. That would be great. Uh, I'm sure that uh, whoever asked this question, um, Mr. Miguel Sanchez, would love to to meet with you through our uh, platform. Yes, I uh, agree. Uh, I think we're done with our questions, and we are also running out of time. So, if your question hasn't been answered, please feel free to reach out to any of our guests platform either for a chat or a one-to-one -one meeting thank you very much very much for joining this experience sharing event be sure to make the most of uh, this networking platform until the end of december and uh, stay safe thank you goodbye thank you very much for the great event thank you all for joining us